All right, let's jump into... Hi everyone, this is the first video in a collection of videos where I'm hoping to one, explain concepts in general chemistry that I know students struggle with, and two, convince you that chemistry can actually be understood rather than memorized, contrary to popular opinion. So what is the point of significant figures? A. They are a cool, perverse form of psychological torment created centuries ago by a secret coalition of warlocks and magi bent on world domination. Or B. They relate to the accuracy of a measurement. As much as you might want the answer to be A, it's B. So let's go into how this all works. On this slide, we're going to compare and contrast three different large cylinders capable of measuring up to 2.0 liters of a liquid. But let's start with the cylinder here, cylinder A. What could we estimate this volume of liquid to be based on what we're seeing here? Well, here's what we know for sure. We know that it's greater than one liter, and we know that it's less than two liters. Furthermore, we can just look by eye and tell that this liquid is definitely not at the halfway point, which is probably roughly around there. So let's say that's 1.5 liters. On the other hand, it's also clearly above, let's say, where 1.2 is probably going to be. And I can confidently say that this liquid is going to be above 1.2. It's probably more around 1.3 or 1.4. Could I go as far as saying that maybe it's 1.36? Not really. Without a doubt, that number's correct. It's clearly 1 point something. Certain. 3 is a reasonable guess. But that 6? That's just nonsense, right? There's no way with this cylinder that I can guess that accurately, that that's a 1.36 as opposed to a 1.38, or even a 1.41 for all we know. So looking at all these numbers, I would say that this number is definitely significant, since we know that it's absolutely correct. This number is significant, since it's a reasonable guess. This number is insignificant, since there is no reason to believe that that number is correct. And so here we come to our first rule. The last significant figure represents the reasonable estimate. Now I'm going to clear some space and bring in another cylinder and get deeper into this concept. Now here we have a cylinder of the exact same size as cylinder A, and our liquid is at the exact same level, but we can now estimate the volume much better because we can see that this cylinder has more lines dividing the measurements. Each of these lines represents a tenth of a liter. And so now it actually becomes quite reasonable to estimate the volume of liquid in this cylinder as being 1.36, because now the one and the three are certain, and the six becomes the reasonable estimate. Now, in cylinder C, we have the same level of accuracy as cylinder B. What's different is the level of this liquid. It is now right around that 1.3 line. We would say that the volume of cylinder C is 1.30. And this, of course, flies in the face of everything that you learned in math class. But here, it just emphasizes the accuracy. If we were to just say 1.3, you would be implying that you're using a cylinder more like this, where that 3 is not certain and you don't know anything beyond that. Whereas by putting this 0 here, we're implying that we have a more accurate measurement happening. We are emphasizing that we are reasonably certain to the hundredths place, just like we were over here. So this is a 3 sig fig reading. We can accurately estimate to the hundredths place. And this brings us to our first rule regarding significant figures. Rule one, regarding trailing zeros as they're called. In other words, zeros to the right of the last non-zero digit. These are always significant if a decimal point is present. So if we just saw a number like 1.500, these would be the trailing zeros because this is our last non-zero digit here. But hopefully, rather than just memorize this rule with no clue of what it means, you can understand now why these zeros are considered significant and what that means. It's to emphasize the accuracy of this measurement here. 
Now, there are some other rules for when and when not to count zeros, so let's get into the logic of those. Let's take this reading here, this 1.30, and let's emphasize that the units are liters, and let's convert to kiloliters, and then we would get 0 0.00130 kiloliters. Now, all of a sudden, we have six digits here, but are they all significant? No, of course not, because we quickly remind ourselves what the point of significant figures are. They relate to the accuracy of a measurement. Changing the unit prefix from liters to kiloliters did not change the accuracy of our original measurements. Just as surely as that 1, 3, and 0 were the only significant figures before, they are still the only significant figures in this number. These zeros here are really just expressing the order of magnitude of the number. And so this is an example of our next significant figure rule. Rule 2. Leading zeros, in other words zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit, are never significant. So a number like this has three sig figs. All of these zeros here are leading zeros. They are to the left of our first non-zero digit. Again, it's not a pointless rule to learn. The logic of saying that these zeros are insignificant is the same as the logic of saying that these zeros are insignificant. Now let's get into one more rule regarding zeros. This time we're going to go from liters to milliliters, which we get by multiplying by a thousand. And in this case, we would get 1300 milliliters. Now, how many significant figures does this number have? If you've already learned these rules in Gen Chem, you probably would guess two, because you would have learned that trailing zeros are not significant when there is no decimal point present. But let's actually think deeper about this. This reading has the same accuracy as this reading. And sure enough, it's that one, three, and zero that are our significant figures. But now we have a conundrum. Notice that this zero is considered significant, but this zero is not considered significant in this situation. How would we know that one was significant and one was not if we didn't have all of this context leading up to it? Well, this brings us to the last rule regarding zeros. Trailing zeros are ambiguous or considered insignificant by default if no decimal is present. And this is the standard Gen Chem interpretation that we learn. So for example, if you just saw a number like 12,000, in Gen Chem you'd probably say this has two significant figures. Although if we're thinking more deeply, for all we know, all three of these zeros count, or maybe one or two of them count, just like in that previous example. But if you learned this interpretation from general chemistry, then by all means just go with that for the sake of doing well in your class. But I will go a little bit further with this idea and say, like, we know that we want to emphasize that this number is three sig figs. If we go with that Gen Chem default idea, we would say that it's two sig figs, which is incorrect. Well, this is where scientific notation comes in. Instead of writing 1300, we will write 1.30 times 10 to the third milliliters, which we know mathematically is the same as this number here, but now all ambiguity is gone. We are emphasizing that we have the same three sig figs worth of accuracy in milliliters that we had over here. And the order of magnitude is what's known as an exact number, and so we don't need to worry about it in terms of sig figs. This is where our accuracy is emphasized. Now what exactly do I mean by an exact number? Well, an exact number is a number that has no inaccuracy to it. And the most common example of exact numbers in measurements would be counting-based measurements. Like, we have one, two, three cylinders here. There is no inaccuracy to that. It's not that we have 3.1 or 2.9. We have exactly three. But in that case, I understand that that is not a one sig fig number. Sig figs don't really apply to it because, again, sig figs relate to accuracy, and that number is perfectly accurate. But another way that you can look at it, and this is what many general chemistry textbooks will say, is that an exact number has infinite sig figs. Infinite meaning we can imagine that this number here is really 
zero, 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 on and on and on. There's never going to be like 3.001 cylinders. That doesn't make sense. The way that I like to look at it is, is that significant figures don't really apply to them because they're perfect numbers. So this brings us to rule four. Exact numbers are considered to have infinite sig figs, i.e. they should not be considered in significant math that we're going to learn about later. And we figure out if these numbers are exact through context. So for example, if I were to say I have one dog, well, that one is exact and has infinite sig figs. But if I were to say my dog is roughly one meter long, well, that one is subject to error and thus it counts as one significant figure. From here, there's only one more rule to cover, and I think it's the simplest. It's that non-zero numbers and any zeros in between those numbers are always significant. So a number like 103, well, that has three significant figures. I include this at the end because I think it's the easiest and simplest one to remember and understand. So those are the rules for counting significant figures and also the logic behind why those rules exist. The next logical step is to go into how we do math with significant figures.